It's Friday, November 8th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today I want to talk about an emergency airworthiness AD that's affecting my fleet of aircraft, the Boeing 777-300ER. This is also a great example of how quick and effective regulatory and oversight still is happening in aviation today. This emergency AD regarding the Boeing 777 stems from an event that happened on 20 October. On 20 October, Thai Airways Flight TG-970 departing Bangkok to Zurich, normally about an 11 and a half hour flight, with 200, or correction, 339 passengers on crew and 20 crew members, did a low speed reject. As they pushed the throttles up to take off, Almost immediately, once that once those throttles were pushed up and the engine spooled up at about 55 knots, the left engine failed. The, the crew rejected the takeoff, a low speed rejected takeoff, and taxied back uneventfully to the gate. Typically we call anything below 80 knots a low speed reject. Above 80 knots or between 80 knots and V1 takeoff decision speed, those are considered high speed rejected takeoffs. Once the crew got back to the gate, and investigators looked at the damage, they found a large hole in the left engine on the inboard side, the right side of the left engine, and they found that d debris had escaped from that left engine and impacted both the aircraft fuselage and the opposite engine. Often in these uncontained engine failures on the ground, the shrapnel hits the ground and bounces back up and penetrates the rest of the aircraft. Here's a picture of the left engine, or number one engine, from the Thai Airways flight. Uncontained failure. Here's the new Emergency Airworthiness Directive, AD 2019-21-51. And here's what the background of this AD says, Emergency AD. This Emergency AD was prompted by an event that occurred on 20 October 2019 in which a Boeing 777ER airplane powered by GE-90-115 B model turbofan engines experienced an uncontained high pressure turbine HPT failure that resulted in an aborted takeoff. Debris impacted the aircraft fuselage and the other engine. Uncontained HPT failure, high pressure turbine failure, if not addressed, could result in the release of high energy debris, damage to the engine, damage to the airplane, and possible loss of the airplane. Remember we studied the Southwest Airlines flight where an uncontained engine failure resulted in rapid depressurization and the seriousness of that emergency and how quick that crew was able to correctly respond and get that aircraft back on the ground. These are some of the issues that are of concern with these uncontained engine failures. So with this airworthiness directive, they're giving operators of these aircraft 25 cycles from the date of the AD to replace or remove an inner stage seal in the high pressure turbine section with very specific serial numbers. So since they've narrowed this down to a very specific range of engines and seals, this possibly may be a case of a um, quality control issue getting out into the field. It sounds like maybe they knew something about these seals or they know something about these seals that they need to correct. So this is where I have some questions for some of you, some of you more technical guys, especially any of you guys out there at General Electric. The purpose of a interstage seal in the high pressure turbine section of these GE engines. We've talked before about labyrinth seals in the compressor section, but now we're talking about in the turbine section. And it is my understanding, though I'm an AMP mechanic and a 777 pilot, I don't normally take apart GE. <laughs> the world's largest turbine engines in my backyard and get a chance to study them. So the interstage seal, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, its function in the high pressure turbine section is to cool the roots of the blades, of the turbine blades. The turbine blades are exposed to high temperature or high pressure, but the root where those turbine blades are attached to the disc, that disc and root area needs to be cooled and I believe that these interchange seals do that do that function and if the seal fails the roots of these blades heats up and they heats up beyond limits and the blades fail 
Now engines are designed to be able to contain uh, a single blade failure, but when multiple blades fail, either uh, high bypass turbo fan blades, uh, compressor blades, or turbine blades, when multiple blades fa fail or an entire disc section fails, the physics are just behind, are just beyond what they can contain. That would take too much um, weight to enable to enable to contain a massive failure like this in these engines. The whole idea is to reduce the likelihood of this occurring, and that's part of the job of these seals. So within 25 cycles of the date of the AD, these aircraft have to be have these seals of these particular serial numbers removed from service. And that sounds like an expensive proposition. And since this is an emergency AD, there's no discussion about it, there's no um, public input about it, and there's not even a cost analysis on it. It's just got to get it done. So that's what we know right now about the Emergency Airworthiness Directive affecting the 777 fleet of aircraft. We've got more questions about that. Hopefully you can help me answer some of the questions about these interstage seals and their function. If we get more information, we'll be sure and post it here. I got lots going on. I'm way behind production in the editing room there. I got the Paradise update to do still. It's a three day weekend coming up. I got uh, Pete and his friends are all showing up with their dirt bikes and we're gonna go trail riding this weekend and enjoy our three days off and our happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Veterans, see you here.